Hector Padua. This guy was relegated to JRU's Team B last season, along with Alex Almario, expected to be back in the fray, playing the role of the fireman today. Again, that double high pick for Ermita. Ermita, again finding a way to get his foot inside the paint for that layup, and he picked up a foul from JRU. That's going to be on Bulangis, his first. There is the three knocked down by Badua. And Ermida at the line now. His first is in. Hector Badua, should he be included in the JRU lineup? This will be his rookie year in the NCAA. Although he spent two years already in JRU, coming off a one-year stint with the University of Santo Tomas Growling Tigers back in 2007. Seven-point advantage for JRU, and they have possession. Bulangis picked up by Ermida. A big thing. Didn't use the glass, maybe should have. Ermida. Semerad from the outside. Three, yes. Semerad, three. After that three made, there is a whistle by one of the officials. A warning was issued on the coaching staff for delaying the game. Now the Red Lions are in rhythm. Anthony Semerad is a very good perimeter player. He's just a rookie, but he's a good perimeter player. He has the green light to take that shot. And now the Red Lions are pressing. This time, they're doing what JRU did to them in the first half. It's a four-point advantage, again, for the Heavy Bombers. Marvin Hayes looking for help. 10 on the 24 of JRU. Padua faking the step back three. No. Bulangis had no chance of getting that offensive board against Daniel. Stop and pop. No. The kick out to Semarad. Plenty of time on the shot clock of San Beda. The dump to Daniel. Got the foul. No basket. He will troop to the line for two. That would have been huge, but the intent is there. Now that the Red Lions are in rhythm, they can make those options. They can reset or they can do a quick strike offensively. And that's how, that's, that's really how to, to thwart a huge advantage. And, and Sanbera just in rhythm, in harmony right now. Perfect description of how Sanbera has regained their composure, Chris here in the third quarter. I mean, in the first half, it was like they were lost. They weren't following their system. They were just out there, you know, playing the game without much coordination. But here in the third quarter, it seems like they are more a more cohesive team. They're playing together. They're finding the open man. And this is what you get. Close ball game. And th that sense of purpose, Eric, uh, w was just absent in the first half. There was a lot of dead time. Now we see the Red Lions. They're very aggressive. They've got even new tricks up their sleeve. Rom de la Rosa, he's 6'4", and he's shadowing the JRU ball handler in this full court press. And really, that's how San Beda has climbed back into this ball game. Coming in for JRU number 18, Abinan. Ulangis. Picked up by number 11, Karam of Serveda. Badwa for three. Illegal, was that an illegal pick set by JRU? I believe so. That's gonna hurt. The heavy bombers right now, well, that was that was actually a good shot, although, although it, an illegal pick cost it, but in, in the previous possessions, Leading up to this San Beda onslaught, JRU is just rushing offensively this time. Yes, there's still that sense of aggressiveness, pero medyo gigil na eh, kasi nga humahabol yung kalaban. And really, this will test the resolve and the character of the heavy bombers under Verhel Menezes. Do you see there, Eric? Beautiful. That seal that we were talking about. Beautiful, you know, high-low play right there by Pascual to another big man in Daniel. And don't look now, folks. After being down by as much as 16 points, one point separates JRU and San Beda right now.
And Daniel has been lording it over everyone inside the paint, as you can see in the last sequence, because he has nobody to contest his size and his athleticism inside the paint. Especially with Atame on the bench. Exactly. It's just a matter of time before we do see Atame back on the floor. Apinan. Shot was partially blocked by Daniel. Marvin Hayes had possession of the leather, and uh, there is a whistle on the play as he tried to put up a shot. Foul uh, is on uh, Pascual, his fourth. Marvin Hayes will troop to the line. There's Itami. We talked about him, especially you know during the half. Off the air, though, about his knee injuries, knee problems, and, you know, it, they are they are considerable. Very. I spoke to him before the game, and he said he was still under a lot of pain. That left knee, which is taped, he, has th he is nursing three injuries in that left knee. A patellar dislocation, a fracture, and I think a slight MCL tear. It's not a, it's not a full tear, but that's coming off the ACL injury that he had on the same knee last season. He says when he walks, Every time there's pain, well, just like in the interview earlier, he has to work. Don't look now. Eric, we have a game. Yeah, we're tied at 48, the fourth deadlock of the game. But this this is the fourth one since six all in the first quarter. Ulangi, step back. Apinan. And somebody's going to be called for a foul here. There it is. Pascual was caught red-handed holding on to a peanut. I think that's his fifth foul. It is his fifth foul. We, uh, we say goodbye to Pascual. That's five fouls. We take a look at that little grab. Little hand-to-hand -hand motion right there. Good, good call, good eye by the ref. <laughs> That, that wasn't the tango, I and think. It, it, was, it was helped a little bit by the acting of Apina, and of course, because obviously you don't really actually crumple to the ground after somebody holds you like that, right? But nevertheless, a, you know, a, a, an actual foul committed there by Pasquale. And there's another seldom used player, Jexter Apinan. Last year, for, for the NCAA televiewers in particular, you'd remember him for for being isolated on the top of the key and slashing, slashing towards the paint with no, uh, with the last possession of the quarter or, or, or the half, and and that's Apinan's game. He's very athletic. He can slash, but at the same time, he's got to expand that. He's now in his third year, and just like his teammates here in JRU, they've got to elevate their roles. Their roles have been elevated, and they've got to put up with their games now. Kara bringing the ball down for San Beda. Excellent play by the Red Lions, finding the open Lanette along the baseline, and he picks up a heavy bomber foul. It's on Apinan, his first. At the line, Garbo Lanette. So Garbo, so far only a meager four points for a player of his caliber, coming off 23 and 21, a 23 and a 21 point performance against uh, Letran and. Uh, Perpetual, respectively. And, and the 21 points against Letran, take note, that was an unfinished game. Because with six minutes left in that game, uh, a walkout marred the San Beda Letran matchup and caused quite a stir here in the arena in San Juan. And so, really, his nine points per game, still a far cry, but San Beda, look at the hustle right there. They're pressing, they're playing it tight, and they're testing the character of this. What is for Helmenes' mentor squad? And it was a held ball situation. Possession arrow awards the ball to San Beda. Take a look here. Matute had nowhere to go. Excellent trap put up by the Red Lions. Working as a team. Tied at 50 all. San Beda has possession and could get their first lead of the game. Karab. Dumps it down. Ah. Everybody here was thinking, no, 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 not Daniel <laughs> shooting from the outside. And they were all correct. <laughs> Ulangis. Matute to Hayes. Five on the shot clock, Apinan. Three to shoot. Oh, the dump, you know where to go. And they throw it away. Here's Lanette. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first lead of San Beda in the game. 52-50.